Toyota has had a long-standing name for reliability for decades in the United States. Engines like the 3.5 V6 and the range of V8s have the reputation to go hundreds of thousands of miles with regular maintenance. However, in recent years, Toyota has decided to discontinue many of these engines in lieu of turbocharged ones. Sure, they're more fun to drive, but they don't have the reliability reputation of the V8s, at least not yet. So today, I wanted to rewind the clock back to 2018, when Toyota was putting the 5.7 liter V8 in one of their best ever SUVs, the Sequoia. Not only that, but the old Sequoia is better equipped with better interior space like the insanely spacious back seat, and amenities like the iconic roll down glass. For the best possible example, I went with this Platinum model, which Finley Toyota kindly lent me for the day. The Platinum model gets perforated seats with heating for the first two rows, cooling plus memory seats for the front row, and 12-way power adjustment for the driver. It's also got a flip-down screen, 20-inch wheels, and load-leveling air suspension. Let's start it up and go in-depth on the greatest family SUV. Beginning with the exterior, the front nose, facelifted for 2018, is menacing, but also classy. It's got a lot of chrome, making it look bold and blingy. However, notice how there are only six inlets on the front. Two are for the full LED headlights with turn signals, two are for the fog lights, and two are for the upper and lower grills. The hood lines have also been improved, and they look incredibly well done. The best part is that the hood doesn't obstruct visibility like in other full-size SUVs. I appreciate how they differentiated this element from the Tundra. The three-quarter angle makes the Sequoia look chunky in my opinion, and that becomes even more so down the side. The fenders, door handles, and window lines have like a post bubble car design to them, but I actually appreciate it. There is still lots of chrome here. The door handles, mirrors, door trim, and wheels are all blinged out. The wheels are 20 inches, but they have a diamond cut finish on the platinum. They also provide plenty of rubber, so the ride is pretty smooth. The mirrors feature a blind spot indicator and turn signals. However, we don't get keyless entry on this generation of Sequoia. But who cares? A feature I appreciate for convenience purposes is the step plate. This is such a tall SUV for me to get into that I find the inclusion of this very helpful. Even though they're not chrome, you get some nice silver roof rails above. Working our way toward the back, you can see the OG taillights, which are surprisingly all halogen, but they have an amber turn signal. The back is pretty much unchanged. The lift gate is powered, but you can operate it manually. My favorite part is that you can open it and close it from the key or inside the car. There's even a skid plate and a rear wiper. But Sequoia enthusiasts know about the greatest exclusive feature, the roll down rear window. Controlled by a key slot or a switch inside the cabin, you can quickly roll the back window down to carry stuff through, throw something in there, or ventilate the cabin without wind noise. It's the best and only implementation of this, and now Toyota doesn't even offer it. What a great feature. Lastly, there's a tow hitch because we get a 7,400 pound towing capacity. It's not exactly a three quarter ton, but plenty for an SUV of this size. Even though this is a full size SUV, I'm quite surprised to see the presence of five lug wheels as opposed to six lugs like on other full sized SUVs. The interior carries on the smart design of the exterior giving the user loads of storage, physical buttons, and the cushiest seats I have ever felt in a modern car. Both the first and second row seats share similar comfort traits. The front row is heated and ventilated, while the second row is just heated. The door panels offer soft touch materials, automatic windows for the front, some fake wood trim to spruce it up, a little storage bin that I am very fond of, and some large bottle pockets. The steering column is amazing on the Platinum. When you start the car, the steering wheel moves closer to you since it's power adjustable with a nice knob. The steering wheel is leather wrapped with fake wood elements on the top and bottom. The right side buttons control the semi-digital gauge cluster. On the left is your tachometer, temp gauge, and oil level. And on the right is your speedometer, battery indicator, and fuel gauge. But the center screen is really cool because it allows you to really customize the car. I like having a digital speed readout, but this can display so much more. You can customize vehicle settings, and even the cluster accent color funnily enough. The left side is for your radio controls. Oddly enough, the down and up buttons are back and next, and the left and right buttons do volume. 
We also have a nice voice command system and the ability to mute and easily switch modes. The lower left buttons are to control phone calls, and the lower right buttons, which I forgot to film, control your adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. We also have cruise control on the stock, which is also why I forgot to film it. However, here's footage of the same one from another Toyota I looked at previously. To the left of the steering column, we have auto high beam assist, the power lift gate button, and this endless void that I can put my hand in. I'm guessing it's for credit cards for a drive through scenario, but another really neat element is that the car in the center screen is a little Sequoia. How nice. Even though the door panels are soft touch, the dash isn't. However, it is incredibly solid feeling. The dash is logically laid out with a whole stack for climate controls, which of course are fully physical. In the Platinum, there are three zones for climate control. It's easy to jump from low to high since there are only 20 degrees of variation, unlike 25 to 30 in most cars. The heated seat dials are awesome because they also double as the ventilated seat controls. Rear temp controls are also right here as well as a USB slash aux port. I'm surprised to see a blank though. Above those is your Toyota Entune head unit. This is an older stereo, so there isn't any CarPlay of the sort. However, it does have Bluetooth, navigation, and XM. If you want CarPlay, it's really easy to get a head unit for a few hundred dollars since the stereo already uses a double DIN insert. Speaking of stereo, we also get an upgraded JBL sound system, which sounds pretty good. The rear view camera isn't fantastic, but the mirrors auto adjust while in reverse and return back to position when done. I think this is in some cases better than a 360 degree camera. To the left of the climate controls are all of the off-road controls. This isn't exactly a forerunner, but we get a two-speed transfer case, a tow haul mode button, controls for the rear air suspension, adaptive damper control, and a limited slip center differential, which I find neat. The air suspension, as cool as it is, takes up to a minute to raise or lower. It might be neat, but to me it feels like a gimmick. I am sure that the air suspension means a smoother ride though. Beneath the center stack, you get two 12 volt sockets and a little insert thing. The center console is pretty nicely laid out, including your shifter for the six speed automatic transmission, three gigantic cup holders, though one only fits my cup decently, and a couple other odd inserts. The center armrest is nicely padded, and it too is absolutely huge. From the factory, you get lots of partitions to easily organize things, plus partitions in the lid. And if that wasn't enough, there was a 12 volt socket in here too. The passenger side also provides loads of space thanks to an upper and lower glove box. The only thing that annoys me about the passenger side is that the seat still is not height adjustable. Speaking of which, the passenger seat can slide, recline, and provide lumbar support. But the driver's side can slide, height adjust, recline, and provide both lumbar and thigh support, which makes an already comfortable seat even more comfortable. We're just getting started. Up above, you get a sunglass holder, conversation mirror, dome lights, a pretty small sunroof, and an auto-dimming compass mirror with home link. But the sun visors are the best I've ever seen. They are not only dimmable, but provide the function everyone's been looking for. Coverage on two sides. When you open the sun visor to the side, you can flip down another for added sun blockage. These are amazing. And of course both sides are extendable. Since this is the Platinum, the interior also gets some nice chrome appointments in addition to the fake wood. The footwell is also nice. This is where your handbrake lives, along with top-mounted pedals. The front seats are already leaving me pretty impressed. But like I said, we're just getting started. This is a family SUV, so it needs to provide in the rear two rows more than anything else. And the back seat is incredible! The second row is not only just as supportive as the front, but it's also heated and provides loads of leg and headroom. These are also slidable and reclinable. Even the second row gets its own center console with a couple cool tricks up its sleeve. Open the console and you get access to storage for headphones and a remote control for your 9 inch flip down Blu-ray player. This is incredible, but also pretty dated. I'll get back to that in a second. The console also contains giant cup holders that don't function all that well, However, there is a divider that you can move if you want to put your phone there instead. Heated seat controls also live here, but the rest of the climate controls live on the back of the front row center console. These are also pretty easy to use, but to the left, you get component video. Who uses component video? <laughs> Why does this have component video? 
Dude, we can plug in the Wii. We should play Wii Bowling on this, I'm telling you. Jokes aside, we also get a 100 watt household power outlet without a ground, and beneath that, we get volume controls and 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks for each back seat. And just under that, we get this airplane style fold out, but to my surprise, these are actually more cup holders. These hold my cup way better. So far, we have seven cup holders, not including the door panels. Speaking of which, the door panels are identical to the front ones, except that these have sunshades. What a nice touch. But the best touch is the ability for the window to roll almost all the way down, which is incredible given its size. Above those are giant grab handles and air vents. Both sides have backseat pockets, and you get dome lights built in with the Blu-ray player. Back to the center console, there is one more trick up its sleeve. If we pull a lever on the back, we can actually flip it down to create a table-like surface and reveal even more storage. This is crazy how much storage the Sequoia provides. This serves another purpose, but more on that later. And lastly, this is one of the only cars I have ever seen to provide adjustable second row seatbelts. This is great for both kids and adults, since you'll probably be hosting various generations, four generations, in this family SUV. To access the third row, just pull the same tab I just used to recline the seat. This pushes and tilts the seat forward, giving me incredibly easy access to the third row. Once I'm back there, I realized just how big the second generation Sequoia's third row was. It's bigger than most competitors today. There is okay legroom and good headroom with the seats all the way back, but you can gain great legroom by sliding the second row forward a bit. This third row is not only better than the new Sequoia by a wide margin, but it provides some nice features. First, this is one of the only cars that has ever provided grab handles in the third row. Next, you get your own air vents, a big window, great cup holders, by the way that adds to a total of 11 cup holders, a storage box, and a storage self. I do wish we had more power back here, but there's a 12 volt in the liftgate area. Not bad for a design that came out in 2008. The best part about these is the ability to power recline them. Now I can really get comfortable in the third row. This is better than most second row seats. Don't buy the new Sequoia for third row room as this is way better, and in my opinion, still the best. That one is much higher up due to a hybrid battery, and that removes vital headroom. The third row also benefits from the sweet roll down rear glass, which brings me on to the tailgate. But first, let's get out. Just use this foot pedal to slide the second row seat forward. That's it, easiest entry and exit I've ever seen. Behind the third row, there isn't a ton of room. This isn't surprising, but you do get a false floor with some bonus storage. The spare lives underneath the car as per usual. You get the 12 volt socket I was mentioning just a second ago. There are great tethering points, but if you actually want to carry stuff, you can use these buttons to power fold the third row, though you have to manually fold the headrests. This gives you considerable space behind the second row, but with some movie magic and a quick pull of the seat folding lever, you can quickly fold the second row. They lock down two, giving you a flat floor. But if that center console is in the way, that doesn't look flat to me. If we fold the bottom bit again like I showed you a second ago, we can flatten the floor. Although, I recommend putting a cover over that. It's a creative solution, but I do wish you could remove the center console and seats for carrying taller objects. Still pretty spacious though. But let's close it up and get some driving impressions on this incredible V8 SUV. First, the Sequoia is powered by the awesome 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8 outputting 381 horsepower at 5600 RPMs and 401 pound-feet of torque at 3600 RPMs. Plus, this engine includes variable valve timing. The power band feels incredibly natural. It gets to 60 in under 7 seconds, which is much faster than I thought. None of the acceleration feels forced, and the engine runs incredibly smooth through the rev range. I didn't even get this engine above 4,000 RPM to get the freeway speeds, and it cruises at about 2,000 RPMs. Plus, the 6-speed automatic is incredibly smooth. There is no sense of jerkiness to this powertrain as it feels incredibly relaxed, but it provides more than enough power. Braking feel is also much better than expected. We get 13.9-inch vented disc brakes in the front and 13.6-inch brakes in the rear, so Toyota beefed up the brakes due to its size and weight. When cruising, the Sequoia is incredibly smooth. Even in the sport damper setting, I found this to soak up bumps incredibly well, resembling that of a land yacht. And that's not a bad thing in a family SUV. Not only is it smooth, 
but it's also pretty quiet. The cabin insulates the V8 noise really well, but just enough that you can hear it rev up. Handling is pretty good, but watch out for a decent amount of body roll. It feels boaty compared to the newer offerings from Toyota, but again, it's much smoother. Just slow down when going through tight bends, and you and your family will be happy. Steering feel is a similar story. It feels relatively easy to control at higher speeds, but it's pretty numb and incredibly light. The benefit of this is that you don't feel bumps through the steering wheel, and it's incredibly easy to maneuver in a parking lot. You can steer this with one or two fingers. I think the light steering is fitting for the Sequoia, but it's not to everyone's taste. The seat comfort holds up well here too. I feel like I could take a very long road trip in the 12-way driver's seat. It has so much cushion and support. The only thing I didn't like about the driving experience was how far the radio and climate controls are from the driver. I assume this is for your co-pilot to help you, but it does require some reaching to access radio and temperature controls. I bet if I owned this, I could get used to them quickly since they're so large, but it's something worth pointing out. I wish there was a way to put some of the third gen's dashboard into this. That would be really cool. Before I wrap up the review, let's talk about how good of a value the Sequoia is. Even though this one has 88,000 miles already, it feels like it's brand new. It drives like it would have on day one. Everything is held together incredibly well. These are known to last over 1 million miles. Even though the 4.7 liter V8 was more notorious for that, the 5.7 has proven to do the same, unsurprisingly. Therefore, the dealership this one is at is listed for $43,000. That's a lot of money for a used car with almost six digits on the odometer, but a quick auto trader search shows vehicles in similar price ranges. The used car market has been crazy for a couple years, and this one is slightly above the blue book value, but these are going to continue to hold their value due to their insane reliability. Further, the release of the new Sequoia, which has deleted the V8 in lieu of a hybrid, and subsequently a lot of interior space, has also shown why these second generation Sequoias are incredibly good family SUVs. Better yet, this Platinum is still $20,000 less than a new SR5, which will most likely be marked up due to dealer greed anyways. Sure, the new Sequoia has some better features like one-touch windows and better cup holders, but this powertrain is more dependable and the vehicle is more spacious overall. From all of the clever features, to the reliable engine and abundance of amenities, I highly, highly recommend getting a used Toyota Sequoia Platinum. And if you don't need the crazy features, SR5s and Limiteds are also a really solid choice. And if you basically want a Mega 4Runner, the TRD Sport model probably provides that look and feel for you. No matter what grade you select, you're getting a great vehicle. Just make sure you're getting a good deal on one too. And keep in mind that these guzzle lots of gas. Personally, I would wait until used car prices sink a little bit more. But that is just my opinion on this fantastic, reliable family SUV. But no matter how reliable your vehicle is, I hope you guys drive safe. Thanks to Finley Toyota, and thank you for watching.